Hi there guys and welcome back to another FPV guide video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a alternative head mounted display. It's called the Tosto, I think Tosto. The Tosto Vivid Video Glasses and it has a ton of features that we are really interested in. Both you can do 5.8 recording or like receive 5.8 video with 32 channels, but it has also got HDMI, meaning I can grab my Inspire or DJI controller and take the HDMI out of that and into these goggles. So that really makes it a kind of a cool new goggle, especially because the price point is just around $200. So this is today's project, but before I get started on the goggles, since none of us have heard about Tosto before, I'm gonna segue into the Tosto through the mini quad, which is quite unique. And here is the mini quad. As you'll notice, it is a somewhat unusual shape, but it also has a flight camera with a little bit of a lens hood with a pointed shape. So it's definitely what I would call a somewhat unusual design. And since I usually fly carbon fiber quads that looks kind of a bit more like this, I gotta tell you, being hard plastic, this is a bit too hard plastic for my taste, but it's really cool design. And they have a feature here that I gotta show you. Lid comes off like that and probably saves some weight for speed. And somewhere here, I have the battery. Now look at that thing. That is a plug-in or rather a drop-in battery. So let's try that. We just literally put it in the hole and push it down and the aircraft is ready to go. So this was probably the fastest battery change I have ever seen. And I really could see having units like this that would work on our mini quads. Now you come in for landing and all you do is you yank this right out of here and you're ready to take another battery and plug it back in and go play again. How is that for cool? So the Tosto company is obviously having a lot of experience with plastic molding and design, and they made some very cool shapes on this stealth fighter style mini drone here. And I really like the innovation in the plug-in battery. Now, having said that, today is not about mini quads with unusual designs. All I wanted to say is the company obviously has a lot of production and manufacturing experience and I like the innovation. There, I'm gonna put this away and we're gonna move right to the goggles. Well, here is the new Tosto goggles. And I don't know if I mentioned that these are now available at carolinadrones.com. Just simply go to carolinadrones.com and type in T-O-V-S-T-O -T -O and you will find them. And let's get into the box. So getting rid of the sleeve here. That was a sleeve. And inside the box, and I gotta apologize, this was a little more organized when I first got it, but it's pretty much exactly the same, except I'm missing the sleeve that the goggles themselves slipped into. So let's just pull the goggles out and here you have them. This is the full goggle and it comes with a 2S battery on the back. I'm putting that down. There's also an accessory pack right here taking that out. And finally in the box, of course, we find a manual as we always would expect. And there's a fit kit of foam. I have not put all of the foam on the head pieces yet, but it's already quite comfortable. In the accessory kit, we find a couple of interesting things. First of all, it comes with a charger that will charge fat chart goggles. It also comes with a couple of adapters you know, this kind of thing, so that we can attach it to international plugs. Ah, here is some more of the fit pieces. You can see how these things basically attach. This is self sticking that goes onto the back of the goggle to make it fit right on your head. Put that stuff over here for now. 
And then there is a monster cable. Notice this thing here, it has a plug here for the battery. Then it has got video and audio plugs. And it also got a power plug here. And the other end, it has a quick connector like this, and you can just mount it quickly. So this is an extension cord that allows you to use these goggles by connecting the extension cord, it will power the goggles and you can use them with a standard base station that gives you video out. For instance, if you're flying 1.2 video or 900 megahertz video, that is the way you would get the video to the goggles. Ah, the last thing in the case is a little antenna. Now, and this is a circular 5.8 antenna. Do remember that a lot of us are flying left-hand circular polarized antennas. That means that make sure you have an appropriate antenna for the aircraft you're flying. At the short ranges I'm dealing with right here, it honestly doesn't matter simply because there is enough signal spill across everywhere. Moving to the goggles, as you can see right here is where the quick connector goes in, I unplugged it so that it would fit nicely in the box, but it just literally, you can see all the pins inside here, and it just slides in like that, it goes click. To release it, you just pull up on the collar and the plug comes out with it. That's all there is to it. There. On the back of it, they have their rather trademark faceted shapes and bright yellow battery here and that literally plugs in like any other fat shark battery. And while we're talking fat sharks here, this is a standard fat shark battery, one of the new nice ones with the power indicator. And absolutely, you can plug it right in here and it will power the goggles. So it's good to know that this battery can be replaced or substituted with any fat shark compatible battery. So moving briskly along, let's take a look at the rest of the goggle here. Up on the side here, I used an X-Acto knife and I cut out a bunch of the foam so that I could get a full size HDMI cable to get to the plug in here. The HDMI plug is a bit recessed and if you use a cable with an appropriate mini HDMI, it will go straight in. However, I wanted to be able to use a full size HDMI cable. So to do that, I carved out some of this material and after that, I got a little adapter from Radio Shack, literally. And that thing just kind of goes in here, find the plug, and it just takes a little bit of a push and then it's in really good. I'm probably gonna just kind of put it down and attach it with some foam glue, foam safe glue, the same stuff you use on your model airplanes. Now with that installed, I'm gonna grab a regular, rather short, about three foot HDMI cable, which is what I use when I fly. And there you go, it goes right in like that. How is that for easy? Now for my use, because I like to pack small and tightly, I usually use my Fat Sharks. Here they are with a Fat Shark 8 decibel patch antenna. And I also have an HDMI cable here. So what I'm gonna do is to give you an idea how these plays together, I'm gonna demo this both with the antenna 5.8 video from a mini quad. And I'm also going to demo it with my Unix 8 Pro over here, which steams 720p video down through the controller. So to get started on demoing that, let's get hold of the brand. And here's the brand. I'm sure you're all well familiar with the brand from previous videos. And this is my standard dominators. I'm gonna remove those. And now we can see the brand's Cyclops Eye right here, which is a camera, a very, very small action camera. So let's get Brad's camera started. The recorder is right here. We're gonna push down, turn it on. And I push the record button so we can put that down. And so before we pop to the yellow goggles here, I am gonna pop the fat sharks onto the Brad. And I'm gonna show you the size of video you get on a pair of Fat Shark HDs. So these goes on right here. Can you see anything, sir? 
and I'm gonna grab the high tech little mini quad. I think it's a high tech 280, and mostly because the other two I have here makes a racket unless I connect the radio. And since I just want video at the moment, this one doesn't make any noise. And there we go. And there you go, and you can now see the video. You can kind of see me right here, and it has a little bit of a flashlight on front. So that is our video source. We're just gonna put it down here, and we'll be using that also with the yellow goggles. So now you know what video we get here, and I guess we can remove the fat shark goggles. There, how are you doing? All right, so being done with the fat sharks, let's get the product the Tosto Vivid goggles on the Brad. Let's see if this works first try. I may have to adjust it a little bit so that Brad can actually see, and of course by extension so you can see. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is plug in the power cable on top here, and then we'll see what we get. It should be starting up, and now you see the startup screen. You can see a little bit of the nose patch. That is because when you see with two eyes through these goggles, you won't see it. But if you look with only one eye, you tend to see that. I don't find that I don't see it as much as Brad sees right now. As you can see, we have a fine image here. We can see clearly. And this is now coming directly from the high-tech mini quad. What we're gonna do is let's start up the H. So I'm just gonna power the H up. And I'm gonna grab the H radio. And while the H is starting up, I am going to grab the HDMI cable here. And by the way, you can hear there's a bunch of noise in the goggle now because of the 5.8 signal from the H. And that's of course coming from my H, my Unic H Pro with the real sense bar here. It streams video using an IP connection through to here, but right now it's also interrupting the 5.8 signal from the mini quad. So because of that, we're gonna turn off the mini quad and get going with this thing. Give us a second here. I think also the mini quad is probably interfering with the radio receiving the H. So we're killing that. Now, there's our snow. I'm gonna disconnect this for a second. That doesn't really matter. Just by the time I turned off the power to the video transmission from the little high-tech mini quad, all of a sudden I got nice and clean video coming in 720p from the handset here. So that was what was in the way. What I'm gonna do now, you can see I have the HDMI cable plugged in up here, and I'm going to go ahead and plug that into the goggles next. So that literally comes in right here like that and right there. Now the goggles are connected. So in order for us to be able to actually see the video from the HDMI source, I'm just gonna turn the goggles a bit and you can see right here is some buttons and this one here is the source, the input source. I'm pushing that and now we are at AV2 and I'm pushing one more time and that should bring us to HDMI. Look at that. Now we have a full image and hopefully you would feel that is a lot better quality image than what we were getting from the 5.8 link at the high-tech quad. So that's the live video right now coming from the camera right here, going through the receiver, which has quite a lot of range and into the goggles right up here. Now you can take video into that from a Phantom, like the DJI Phantom 4 with an HDMI output from a Unic H or Unic H Pro. And you can also get it out of a whole bunch of other units like the Autel X-Stars, which uses tablet. So if you use a tablet with a video out or rather an HDMI out option, you can also get HD for flying. So there you have it guys, that's my quick walkthrough of the Tovsto Vivid Video Goggles. 
they do 5.8 gigahertz video receiving and they also have HDMI video input. Along with the 5.8 receiver, up on top here you have a little button that allows you to toggle through by clicking multiple times the, all the channels and also the bands A, B, C, D and E I think. So you have 32 channels in total. That allows you to watch the video from pretty much anything you might be flying out there that uses 5.8 gigahertz. And then of course you have the HDMI on the side. I actually started talking an extra battery into the headband here to get a little more weight to kind of counterweight this when I wear it. And you guys have probably noticed I wear goggles. I mean, if I take these off, I see perfectly right here and they're actually a fairly comfortable goggle. Well, for what it is, you can't hardly get around the fact that this is closer to two pounds worth of goggle. However, it's not heavy on the head and I actually enjoy flying with the big screen when I fly. Most racers will say they don't like big screens. However, if you're flying scenic FPV and just kind of like flying slowly along with the 5.8 gigahertz system, or if I'm flying to get a really nice shot using the H, I like the big screen. I particularly like the video coming from the Inspire, the H or the Phantom 4 because it's HD video. And I gotta tell you, when you get HD video in front of you here, it's like looking out a window. It is so bloody clear. And you have this awesome experience of flying that you just don't get when you're looking at your tablet in your hand on top of the radio because you have all the light from the surroundings. Here it gets dark and you really see your shot. Of course, when you're flying like this, make sure you lock your camera to forward position and your dampening so that you don't forget what direction the aircraft is flying compared to the camera. Now, I'm gonna try to show you a little bit more of the shapes here. You can really see how the plastic is laid out like we have seen before, but the shapes of the plastic are completely new. So. Whoever did this built a completely new set of tools. I don't know if you can see here, but here is the source. Then there's up and down. If you click over here for the menu, then you can click up and down here for the menu settings and select or deselect for menu settings in menu or also volume. I like the volume turned off because I hate when the buzzing comes on. And here's on the other side. Let me show you a bit of that. Right here like that, you can kind of see the stuff coming down here. That's where your foam fit kit goes. But actually, I didn't really need it, so I guess my cheekbones are bigger than average. But that's where the foam comes on right here. And here's the yellow nose guard. The nose guard is so that when you breathe, you won't get missed up on the screen. And the way it's made is you have an HDMI screen in here that's quite large. And then in between you have a three times Fresnel magnifier. And to get back to, I took my glasses off before. Here's the odd thing, I'm nearsighted. Yet I see perfectly clear on this type of screens when I'm flying with Fresnel screens. So this device here, for some reason with my nearsightedness, I'm able to see perfectly clear without my glasses. I'm not a doctor, I have no explanation, but that does work for me. Anyway, that's probably about everything you need to know about the goggles here. They're now available from carolinadrones.com right around $200. So check them out on carolinadrones.com and make sure you click the button right under the video here to subscribe and stay tuned for more FPV Guy videos.